Um, anyone that wants to join outside later. So there we are. We are recording. That slide was really more for me than for you. <laughs> I would forget. All right. So if this is your very first NC Bold presentation for today, in order to receive the credit for attending the Bold presentations, you will need to download the Performance Matters app on a secondary mobile device. If this is all like garbledy goop to you, um, there's all kinds of information on a how-to page, and you can always reach out to Lauren, Brian, or Jill, and they will be happy to help you with that. Um, I'm just gonna, there it is, boom, at the end of the session, I will give you a QR code. That QR code is not embedded in the presentation slide notes that you have um, for a reason. I don't wanna just give that out. Um, they wanted to make sure that they honored and respected the time of those who chose to attend NC Bold. Um, and so we didn't want it in these slide presentations. We wanted to make sure that we gave credit to those who took the time to show up. So thank you for being here and um, you will have that presentation link at the end. So again, I am Alicia Ray. My current role is I am Lead Digital Learning and Media Innovation Facilitator, a big old mouthful. I work at Metaview Magnet Middle School in Surrey County Schools. My role here is absolutely a dream job. I serve as their school librarian, so I get to work with my students on research and literacy, and I also get to work with my teachers in the role as a digital learning and instructional coach. So I'm co-teaching, co-planning, and I'm also serving serving students um, as, uh, as their research guru, basically. And we're a one-to-one -one Chromebook school and also a bring your own device school. So I get to teach them safe, um, accurate, updated um, research. And it's really exciting to get to do that, especially in a middle school environment. I'm also the author of Educational Eye Exam. Um, it was published by Dave Burgess Consulting, the same folks that published books like Kids Deserve It, um, Innovator's Mindset, Teach Like a Pirate. I'm looking at my bookshelf right now, trying to think of all the different amazing books that they have published over the years. Um, there's 150-ish of the books right now. Um, Culturized by Jimmy Casas was published by them. All the Matt Miller books, Ditch That Textbook, and so forth. So anyway, um, it was really cool to get picked up by that group, and I'm honored to be part of that. So if you're interested in knowing more, um, the link is, if you click on that book in the slide deck, the link will take you, um, and you can learn more. That's all I'm going to say about that. I just want you to know because I'm kind of proud of that. That's one of my lifelong dreams. And, you know, I am a school librarian, so it's kind of cool that I got to write a book. You can find me at aliciaray.com. You, if you're more comfortable with email, my email is linked there. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram um, as at I Love Educating. I'm on Facebook as well, but I'm going to be honest, you don't want to see my Facebook. You won't be my friend on Facebook because I'm one of those people that just post all kinds of crap about what I eat and what I do. And my current story on Facebook is me pointing at a new riding llama where I got, it's what it is. You don't want that in your life. Trust me. Okay. So, <laughs> so why Google Forms? You are in a Google Forms 101 session today. Why in the world do we care anything about Google Forms? Why is this such a big deal? And I'm sure that over the past year, year and a half ish, you have probably filled out more Google Forms than you even know what to do with. Well, I'll tell you, for us on the other side of this, there are so many advantages to using Google Forms. And I'm hoping that by the end of this session, you're going to see those advantages if you've not used Google Forms before on the teacher side of things. Um, you get that immediate feedback. You get a phenomenal summary report. And they're super easy to customize, almost too easy and you're gonna see that in a few minutes. Um, There's so many options that sometimes those options can actually be overwhelming. Um, so we're gonna look at the basics and looking at the basics, um, I like to do things in threes. You're gonna see this more and more as we continue through here. And so the basics, I like to think of it as creating the form, <clears throat> send your form link to your students or your learners. Um, let's just open that up and say to your learners. And then you watch those results start to come in. That's all there is to it. 
That's the basics. Now, sending a link to somebody, I know y'all got that. Not a problem. Check. Watching results come in. I feel like we've got that. We're all good at that. We got, that's not a problem. Creating the form may be what you're here for. Hopefully in the, um, in the session title and in the session description, there was enough evidence of this being a totally beginner session. This is for, we're taking baby steps. Okay. This is at the, I'm going to assume, you know, nothing. If you're a Game of Thrones friend, you know, nothing. You are Jon Snow. You know nothing, Jon Snow, she says. Um, this is where we're at. So how do you create a Google form? Simply go to Google Drive, click New, and then down at the bottom, Google Forms has actually found its way to the same section where it says Google Slides, Google Sheets, and Google Docs. It was, it used to be the big three. I used to tell people, there's the big three, slides, sheets, and docs, and that's all people ever heard about. Well, Google Forms has somehow wiggled its way up there. And so now we kind of got the final four rolling. Um, and that's really exciting um, that they've got that going for them. So I love that. From Google Forms, you'll get blank form, blank quiz, or from template. Or if you just want to not even worry about any of that, as long as you're logged in on Google Chrome, you can type in forms.new into your URL up at the top and it will open up a brand new form for you. I love that shortcut. I use it all the time. Forms.new. That same shortcut also works for Google Docs. You can type in docs.new, sheets.new, slides.new. I've not seen it work with drawings yet, but knowing Google, it's coming. I always make sure I have the essentials where I name it. That way I can find it <laughs> because Google. <laughs> my Google Drive is a mess. You're going to see my Google Drive in a minute. Um, then I make sure that I have a spot for student first name and last name and their class or period. Then I give it the questions, add all my questions, whatever I'm wanting to ask, and I give it a theme. This one breaks my power of three rule and I really hate that. But anyhow, I give it a theme. I make it pretty. It's like I tell my students, right? And I'm sure that you have said the same thing. We all have those kids that we give them an assignment and we tell them we want them to make it, you know, we want you to color this. We want, we want you to make it real artsy. They spend more time on the art and the color and the making it look good than they do the actual content. Well, I like to make sure, let's put the content in first and then we give it the theme. Then we make it pretty. And you'll see that evident in this, this slide deck. So step two, you've made it. And I'm actually going to take you step by step through making it. So. This is just the overview. This is the 10,000 mile view, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of this here in a minute. Step two, how to share it. To share the Google form, you, pre, you, you need to go click on the preview eyeball and we'll look at that. You copy the link, paste the link, and then you can use a shortener like bit.ly, a bit.ly, or a tiny URL at tinyurl.com. Both of those are free services that you can use. Um, both of them have extended services. If you want to pay for a little extra something, something, you can do that there. Um, but I just use their free features and they work just fine. But um, those are two of the best ways to, to be able to share out Google Form information with folks. Or you can just link it which is what I've done later on in this presentation. I know this might seem, especially if you're brand, brand new to Google Forms, I know I just have literally thrown you in the deep end. The reason I did this, if you're brand, brand new, is so later on, when you go look at something and you're making it, it's you're seeing the big picture first and then it zooms in. So you can kind of work your way through what you need instead of doing the the minute things first. It's the way my brain works. <laughs> so step three, how to get Google Form uh, responses. There's two different ways. You have an edit view that you'll see in a minute with responses and or you can create a Google Sheet and I'll show you why both of those are valuable in a minute. Okay, so those are your three steps. Very simple, very quick. So let's see it in action. 
I am a person who needs to see things hands on. I need to be able to actually do the things instead of talk about the things. And I have a feeling that a lot of you are the same way. So what I want you to do is if you're in this presentation with me right now, if you have gone to bit.ly slash all caps, NC bold, capital F, and then forms 101, or if you can access the chat, I'll stick it in the chat, um, the link in the chat. I want you to click on that bicycle. When you click on that bicycle, you're going to get a form to fill out. And as I said, I'm going to stick it in the chat for you too. There it is. And your form is going to look like this. Just a quick little, who are you? Get to know you. You know, I'm not going to ask you any kind of like balance and chemical equations kind of questions, I promise, um, because I couldn't answer those anyway. <laughs> but just real quick, scroll through there and answer those questions for me. I won't harass you unless you want me to. Um, and you have some different options there to answer. And then I'm going to be the Wizard of Oz and I'm going to pull the curtain back and let you see how each of these questions got answered and what this looks like on the teacher side, okay? And we'll give you about three minutes, four minutes maybe to answer those questions. And I know that some of you may be on the road and so forth. I am, please focus on the road, my friend, <sighs> or have, have your son fill it out for you. <laughs> Hey, I'm already seeing some responses come in. Fantastic. Awesome sauce. Oh boy, I got some people that deserve some gold medals up in here. I see you. Yep. The Olympics of educators. That would be awesome. 25 year plus. Ooh, you get gold medals big old gold medals made with real gold, the kind that when you bite into it, it, it like bends. There's an indentation. <clears throat> that ain't no lie either. All right, five. Got just a couple more people that I know are, um, that are in the session. I wanna make sure that I give them a moment to get their responses in if they choose to or if they're able to. This teacher needs a massage, I can tell you that right now. I just reached up and felt my shoulders are tense as can be. All righty. All right, I might have just a couple more that are finishing up and gonna hit submit soon. Um, in the interest of your time, I'm gonna go ahead and continue. So let's take a moment and look at these responses. This is Oz kind of pulling the curtain back. Um, this is where I went in and created this form. And I'm actually gonna cheat a little bit and scroll down to the bottom and see um, our experience with forms. Fantastic. That's what I was hoping to see. All right, great. So when I look at the question, what's your experience creating Google Forms? Um, ones and twos, you are absolutely like you're in the right place. I know that I started out kind of maybe blowing your mind a little bit. I promise from this point forward, 
it's going to be, it's going to feel much more on pace. Um, threes and fours. I'm hopeful that you'll learn something. Um, I hope that I don't bore you to death. I, I consider myself to be a four or a five usually with Google Forms. There's things that I still feel like I can learn. Um, however, I, um, I feel pretty well versed in Google Forms. So I'm hopeful that there will be something in this session, even at the beginner level. If you're like me, I got kind of tossed into the deep end with it. And I never really took the time to learn the most basic of the basics. I just kind of taught myself. So maybe I will su be surprised and I'll get to teach you something. Um, otherwise, my feelings absolutely will not be hurt if you want to try to jump into another session that you're interested in. Um, and if you want to stick around, I am not trying to kick you out either. I would love to have you. I just want to make sure I'm being very, very respectful of your time because as educators, I know we don't have a lot of that. That's our most valuable asset to us. So, all right. Um, so our responses, let's take a gander real quick. So my name is Alicia Ray. I have seven people. Take a second and notice how whenever I have responses that I get back as short answer text, which is what you guys responded as, a short answer text, then I get my responses set up in a certain way, okay? They're going to come in to where if I had more than seven or eight responses, I would end up getting to scroll through though that one little section this one little block here of responses it just so happened that i got kind of the the perfect number of responses so that i'm not going to scroll in that one section um if i had a couple more responses than that section right there i would end up needing to scroll through it now here's what could happen as a teacher it seems inevitable that we will have at least two students that have the same first name i don't know what happens it just does and a lot of times in school, if we just put what's your name, like I did with you guys, we will put our first and last name. Many of you probably put first and last because I modeled it as my name is Alicia Ray. I don't know that our students would do that. A lot of our students, do we have to put our last name? You know how it is, right? So um, you could take that on as making that two separate questions. What's your first name? What's your last name? Um, or you could say, what is your first and last name? What is your full name? In which case you might get middle names. Yay you. Um, or <laughs> you could just say, what's your first name? And just have a conversation with those kids who, um, you know, you've got two Johns in the classroom. Well, one might be John A and one might be John B, depending on what their last name is, whatever. That's kind of a personal preference, but um, what happens though, when you have multiple kids with the same name, it will turn into a bar graph. And so that's where sometimes that can get a little bit annoying um, and can cause some issues sometimes, depending on what kind of data you're looking for. So then as I scroll down, I love making friends on social media. I gave you mine. And so what is your handle? That was kind of just for me. So if anybody adds me, I know not to be snobbish and not add you back. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I, I click to add as friend or to follow back or whatever. All right, I work in a middle school. What age group do you mostly work with? So in this case, um, I hope that you noticed that you actually had the option with this question to choose as many choices as you'd like. These are called check boxes and they allow you to pick more than one response. Um, I did word the question in a way that it led you to hopefully only pick one, but I know we have some people who, you know, maybe you have a K-8 school and you're working in K-8, so you consider yourself to be middle and elementary, or uh, maybe you serve um, middle and high school teachers as a coach and so you are an adult learner um, or maybe you are we had an encore teacher one time actually who worked in middle school band and high school band so they would have picked middle and high that was just kind of the way it worked so I see that we actually have a great 
uh, diverse group here, which is fantastic. We have two elementary, two middle, and two high. I love that. And then we have one administrator. Hello, administrator. I'm so glad to see you here getting your digital learning credits. Awesome sauce. Fantastic. Um, and so then I said, I serve my school as the digital learning coach, library media specialist, and AIG teacher. Y'all, that's a true story. We ain't even playing. What role do you most closely identify with? So it looks like we have three classroom teachers or people that most closely identify with a classroom teacher, um, three who identify as support staff, one instructional coach, and one reading teacher. So this is another situation where you could um, choose as many roles as you identify with. So I would have chosen for me support staff, librarian, media specialist, and instructional coach. I would have chosen three different spaces. Um, and so you had the opportunity to do that as well. So it looks like somebody did. Somebody took advantage of that because we only had seven people answer, but I have eight responses. So kudos to you. I love that. Primary content area. I could see we have two elementary um, and we got that earlier. Um, I see that middle grades math, high school math, and then high school CTE elective. So this is kind of interesting to me because um, I had, I know about my two elementary and then I had two high schools. So one of my high school is math. One is a CTE or elective course. So one of my middle grades is math. The other one um, either wasn't listed or skipped the question, which is perfectly fine. I'm not hating on that at all. I just find that interesting. And then, of course, there's the experience with Google Forms. This question is always my favorite one to ask. In fact, in my book, I know I said I wouldn't say anything else about it, um, was not listed. Gotcha. Thank you, Sandra. Um, I'm not sure if you go by Sandra or Sandy, but thank you so much for um, sharing that. Um, I'm, cu I'm curious what I missed. What, which one? What are you? SSW. What is that one? Oh my goodness, it's an acronym in education I'm not aware of. Or maybe I am, but it's different in different school systems. School slash. Oh, you're right. I did not include that. Oh my goodness. And those are some of my dearest friends. We're not going to tell them I did that, okay? Oops. I'm going to fix that for my other three sessions. I am so sorry. Y'all are super valuable. Um, thank you. Thank you for calling, like, calling me out on that indirectly. I love you for that. I'm going to fix that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Fantastic. Um, this question is one of my favorites. I always, um, and I, I know I said I wouldn't mention the book again, and I'm sorry to do that, but in the book, I talk about this exact question because I find it insanely valuable because these age spans the or these experience spans I did not put haphazardly <laughs> okay um, and I think you're gonna get this because we are all veteran teachers here <laughs> all of us and I love that okay so zero to three prepare yourself you're either gonna laugh because it's true or you're gonna laugh well you're just gonna laugh <laughs> you better laugh doggone it because I put a lot of thought into this so zero to three here's what happened to me zero to three years was my beginning teacher section and we actually were BTs and if we had a mentor our mentor like in my situation again this is this is based on my situation I was in a situation where I was like I really kind of don't need you um I got this I just finished up my degree uh, I, I just went to school for four years to be a teacher and um, I don't need your help anymore. Thank you. But no, thank you. I got this. And so like I did not accept anybody's help. I did not need anybody's help. I really just needed people to leave me alone. And then when I got to four to seven years, I realized just how wrong I was. <laughs> four to seven years. I was like, I don't have a daggone clue what I'm doing. I don't know what end is up. I don't know what you mean my curriculum. What was a curriculum again? Like something happened in four to seven years that I realized exactly how deer in the headlights I felt 
um, because I didn't have that safety net. I didn't have that like, oh, I'm new here that I could kind of fall back on when I did mess up. Um, because about four years, we start to say, oh, you got this. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Right. So four to seven, that was my, oh my goodness, years. Um, eight to 10 years, I will tell you eight to 10 years for me, that was my honeymoon stage. Um, between eight and 10 years, I felt like I knew what I was doing. I had my junk together, but my administration didn't know yet that I had my junk together. So I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> I, I got left alone. <laughs> I got to teach. So I didn't need to like head up any kind of committees. My sweet administrator, I love you, honey. Um, but I didn't have to do anything. I, there were no committees I was on. I didn't need to be on the SIT team. I didn't get asked to have a student teacher. Um, I, I got to shut my door and I got to teach. My uh, my evaluations came and went, you know, they, they were kind of under the radar. It was great. It was a good time. It was a good time to be a teacher. And then about year 11, Somebody was like, hey, this chick knows what she's doing. Somebody needs to come watch her put a pineapple or something on her door. <laughs> we go get some teachers to come see her. And then they all started hating my guts because it was like the second that everybody said, go watch her teach. You know, then it's like nobody really likes them anymore. So 11 years was this time period where I started feeling so overwhelmed because I did get placed on so many committees and got started. People started asking me to go do things and present here and do this and do that. And year 15 uh, or no, year 14 was when I wrote a book. And, you know, there was so many things going on, so many different pieces that were just, it was just so much. And then around the end of year 14, I started figuring out the word no. <laughs> and so I, I honestly kind of fell back into the honeymoon stage, but it wasn't before that year 15 hump where I've just gotten there. I just finished up year 15. And now I'm in the, can I really do this for the rest of my career stage? And so you 11 to 15, um, my one friend who is sitting there in 11 to 15, I'm sure you feel me because the rest of you are, um, you've already passed that little hump. It's like hump day, right? That Wednesday, like today where you're like, okay, if I can just get through today, Lord, if you will just help me get through the day. Uh, tomorrow is a downhill slide. It's Thursday, right? That's kind of how year 15 has felt for me. Um, 16 through 20 kind of feels like a Wednesday evening so far. And I mean, I've just started year 16 and it's not, <laughs> things are not looking up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then 20 to 25, I can only imagine um, counting down. And then by the time I get to 25, um, based on North Carolina's lovely steps, um, I, I, I have a feeling that I'm going to be wondering why in the world I keep doing this. I, I know that I'm in it for the kids and I know that I love my kids and I love, love, love my career. But I do wonder at 25, there's no more pay raise. I'm done. I'm maxed. Um, why am I still sitting here? And so that'll be when I start checking orbit religiously, right? Like how much more am I going to make every day? <laughs> every month I'm here. <laughs> What's that going to do? Is that another $5 for my retirement every month? Is that going to be worth it? Right. I hope y'all are. I mean, I say this like jokingly, but I feel like, I feel like some of you feel me. I feel like you feel me sometimes. Um, so those, those were not picked haphazardly. Those, I feel like those are very, um, I feel like those years signify th those are benchmark years in an educator's life. <laughs> um, what time of day or night do you feel like you do your best work? I love it. We got, we got morning people and we got night owls. Yep. I'm with my night owl people. Um, if you were to go check out the edit history on anything on here, it was probably done around midnight because that's how I roll. I'm a night owl. 
very cool. And I wanted you to, some of these questions I asked in such a way, I asked for the responses in a way that you could see the variety of respond, the, the variety of the summaries that I got. So like this 15th year in education, notice how I got a bar graph versus the daytime, nighttime, the timing question. Um, I got it more in like a timeline, right? So that's kind of interesting. And I did this so that you could see the type of question that you ask and the choice of how you, the option you give them to respond is going to have a lot to do with the, the feedback that you get. That's, that's a really, really important piece of information that you're going to need as we move forward. Okay. So let's move back into the, we're back into the slideshow, the inaction piece. If I move forward, that this plan backwards, this is a, literally what I was talking about. When I'm creating um, a Google form, I always plan backwards, meaning that I choose the the question type that's going to give me the best and the most immediate data. I want to be able to look at it visually and figure out if this is classroom content, who gets it and who doesn't. I do not want to sit there and read a paragraph from every student because that's not going to help me make immediate decisions. If it's something where I really want to know um, the depth of their knowledge, then I'll ask them to write me a paragraph. And I'll ask them that maybe in Google Forms. But to be honest, usually I'm gonna use a Google Doc for that. I mean, or even a Google Slide and have them just put it in one Google Slide presentation so I don't have to go to 15 different places for it. Or even a discussion board post. Um, I rarely use the paragraph option in Google, in Google Forms. Um, I really, really like the ability to get those really nice graphs so that I can look at it immediately and say, hey, that helps me to redirect the way I'm teaching right now. Um, so just know that moving forward. And as you are working to build your forms in the future, consider that as far as choosing your question type. So let's look at some of those question types, your options. So when I go to create a new form, I'm gonna see options along the side. Those options for my questions are things like short answer or paragraph. You did some short answer today. You did not do paragraph for the very reason we just discussed. You did some multiple choice where you could only pick one answer and some check boxes where you could choose multiple answers. You also did, um, you did not do a drop down for this one. A drop down is going to function very similar to multiple choice. One of the things that I like about a drop down versus a multiple choice is when I have students that get overwhelmed with um, how long something is, when they get, if it's one of those kids that scrolls to the bottom or they flip to the very last page, or they wanna know how many questions are on the test, that kind of kid. If they see a, let's say it's a formative assessment that has 10 questions and they're all multiple choice, that form is gonna look really long. If I do a drop down, that form is gonna look a lot shorter. Let me show you an example of that. So I'm gonna share this tab where I went in and did that 15th year in education, okay? I'm gonna switch back over to my questions. Notice I have questions on one side, responses on the other. So on my questions tab, I'm gonna scroll down to where I asked the question about the 15th year in education, okay? So currently, when I preview that, when I preview that question, it's going to look like this, right? And it's got all those different options and that's a pretty big box. However, when I go in and I change that option to, when I change it from multiple choice here to a drop down, okay? 
all I did was change my, my question option from multiple choice to drop down. And then I go back to my, my form and I refresh my form. Remember, it's Google. It's live, right? I love Google for that reason. It's live. Look what it did to this question. You see how much smaller that box became? It does something mentally for kids. And so now, imagine that times 10 questions. Now, all of a sudden, this super long quiz that's 10 questions might feel doable to some of those kids. So when I click the choose button, I have options that come down, okay? Now, I would not use a drop down if I had those lengthy questions where, you know, it's a multiple choice, but it says, which of the following is true? And then A has something that's two sentences long, B has something that's two sentences long. That's not gonna work in this case. I can't use that for drop down. It needs to be a short, like maybe a vocabulary word or um, a quick concept or a number like this, that would work. But if I have a, a long paragraph full of something, that's not going to work in a drop down. Okay. I'm going to switch that back because it's going to annoy me. Sorry. All right. <laughs> cool. So I have all these options here. And if it's okay with you, I'm actually going to kind of stay in this edit version of my form. Um, and I'm going to still continue to go through the slide deck, but I'm rather than constantly switching back and forth between the slide deck and the, the forms um, and having to switch my tab constantly, I'll just stay here and continue through it. Um, so again, we have multiple choice checkboxes drop down. File upload, I'm going to be real honest with you. That's not something I use very much. It's also not something that I'm going to really discuss in Google Forms 101 because you get into some administrative issues with Google Forms 101. You get into um, like upload size. There's just, it's not worth it. It's much easier rather than having them upload something in a Google Doc or I mean in a Google Form. I would what I have my kids do, I have them upload the file into their Google Drive and then grab me the link from Google Drive, like the share link from Google Drive, and then they put it in there as a short answer response. I can still, I get the link that way and I can just click on the link and it comes up for me and I don't have to worry about downloading a file, uploading a file, trying to find a file, none of that mess, okay? File upload is something, I think I might've used it twice in however many years I've been using this. So, it, but it's there, if you know, it floats your boat, there it is. Um, linear scale, linear scale is where I asked about the, um, what is your experience using Google Forms? Uh, creating Google Forms. You can change the scale. It does not have to be one to five. It can be one to 10. It can be one to 115, whatever number you want. Um, it'll give you a linear scale and it will give you benchmark numbers throughout that scale. So if you were to do, you know, one to 50, um, it would be one to 25 to 50. Like it'll, it'll break it up for you. Typically use odd numbers so that, you know, you have that neutral there in the middle. Um, for the kids that say, I don't, I really don't have an opinion. If you want to force them to have an opinion, choose an even number so that it's either slightly one way or slightly the other way. Multiple choice grids and checkbox grids. Those are a little more advanced than um, I feel like maybe we should head in Forms 101 for now, if you have questions about the multiple choice grid and the check box grid, I'll be happy to talk to you about those um, individually. Maybe that'll be a good thing for the end of the session if you wanna see some of those. If you're maybe a three or a four and, and you want more information on that, I'll be happy to work with you through those. Just basically know they're the same thing as multiple choices and check boxes, but it's, like multiple 
multiple choices and check boxes all within one question. And you can set it up to where like they have to pick one per row. Um, so it's kind of, think of it as like a ranking system or a um, either or kind of system is what that would look like. And then, of course, you have the date and the time. You answered a time question. Date questions are very much the same thing. OK, so those are your question types. Again, there are options, right? So if you're on the form uh, or sorry, if you're on the slide deck, we're going to the next slide where um, we're going to talk about even more options. <laughs> and those are the options that are here along the side. So when I create a new form, um, that's actually, I think, what I'm going to do. Yep, I am. We're going to do that, friends. That'll make more sense, I believe. So I'm in this folder that I've created for NC Bold, and I'm going to create a new form. I'm going to go here to new. And remember, I said it used to just be the big three doc sheet slides. Forms has wiggled its way on up. So I'm just going to click there. I usually don't use a template. It's going to bring up an untitled form for me. I usually don't use templates for the simple fact that um, using a template sometimes can get me in over my head a lot faster than I meant to. Um, sometimes it can do things that I'm not quite ready to do or undo. So I like to just start from a blank one. So first thing I'm going to do is name my form. Little pro tip, if you name the form up along the top, it will automatically name it up here if you click it. So this is a test form. And then when I click over here at the untitled form, boom, it names it for me. Form description is where I can give my instructions for completing form. Untitled question. Very first question should always, always, always be the kid's name. I cannot tell you how many times I have had. In fact, I messed this up earlier today um, with my Girls Who Game group. I sent out a form and I was like, wait, 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 don't answer anything yet. Let me go refresh. So I went in and fixed it because I had forgotten to put in there to ask them for their name. So name, however you want to do that. Now, did you notice that? God, I love Google. Did you see what just happened right there? Yep. So I click, I type name, click kind of over to the side and boom. It went ahead and auto generated the fact that it knew I wanted a short answer. I love that. Okay, so now I can add a question. I can import a question from another form that I've already created. Isn't that cool? I can add a title or description. And if you join the Google Forms next level, which is my next session at 3:30, we're going to talk a little bit about why you would use that button. Add an image. We'll talk a little bit about that too then, um, but it literally does what it says. It adds an image. Um, add a video. You can add videos from YouTube and then add a section. And that's the biggest thing we'll be talking about in Google Forms Next Level. So you have all of these options. If you're just making a standard basic, I just want my kids to answer a few questions for me, Google Form, you just click add question. Okay. If you have several classes, especially my friends that were high school, uh, middle school, if you serve different schools, if you're my um, administrator and you want to know like a grade level or a class period, if you are working in elementary and you work as a PLC, if you've got a really tight knit PLC, you may want to put on there like who your teacher is because you can actually share these forms among your PLCs. So to do that, if I put in here, like the best PLC I ever worked with, um, so teacher, who's your teacher? And then I go pick, this is going to be a multiple choice question. So for me, it was either Hazelwood, Ray, or Snow. That was my rock star PLC that I worked on for like years. They were amazing. So here was my section. I can share it now by going to my three dots here and it says add collaborators. And then I can add my editors here. 
So that's where I would share this information with Ms. Hazelwood and Ms. Snow to let them know like, hey, here's the form um, that you're gonna have for your students. And so that, that would give them the ability to access the responses and so forth of their students. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then I can put in my questions. So three plus two. Well, it's telling me multiple choice is still a good option. And it is four, five. Oops, I don't know what just happened right there. What is happening with my life? Four, five, there we go. Six, seven, okay. And did you notice that it gave me suggestions here? It will do that a lot. Um, like, do you like macaroni and cheese? It's gonna give me suggestions. Yes, no, maybe. So I can click yes, no, maybe is not an option. Like either you do or you don't, there's not a maybe. Um, so yes or no. So you can go through and make this um, form pretty quickly. So what I'm gonna do, um, again, transparency. It's time for the students in just a few minutes to head out. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to show you one or two more things within creating a Google form. And then I'm hopeful that you're at a spot where you can actually make your own Google form. And then I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through how to share your form with one another so that each of us can answer the questions that are on one another's forms. That way you can then access the responses and get some firsthand experience in like looking at the responses, feeling what it feels like to, to actually click that responses button and have some actual data there. Because I don't know about you, but there's nothing that makes my heart beat faster than to try something for the first time with a group of kids whose eyes are looking at me like saucers and then it fails epically. Um, so I want you to feel comfortable with Google Forms, especially if you are one of my ones or twos, and this is kind of your first go round with it, okay? So the other couple things that I wanted to show you before we kind of go to commercial break, if you will. <laughs> um, so the other couple things I wanted to show you, um, depending on what type of question you ask, so this multiple choice question. I have three dots down here. If you've used Google for a while, you know that three dots are gonna give you options, right? So these three dots here are gonna give me the option of description, go to a section based on an answer, that is the next level th type thing, or shuffle the option order. Well, we've had experience, most of us, with some shuffle and option order. That means that for some kids, it's gonna say no before it says yes, okay? Um, that's up to you if you want to turn that on. Description, I really like if you want the kids to answer something specifically or if you want to verify what you mean. So for this one, maybe I'm saying um, I'm not talking about the baked macaroni and cheese. I'm talking about the gooey and cheese, right? Because there's going to be questions. Those are two very, very different kinds of macaroni and cheese. Baked, I'm not crazy about it. The gooey mac and cheese, I could eat all day, okay? So these three dots, and they're going to be different based on the type of questions that you're using. A short answer response, those three dots, notice that I don't have, of course, the shuffle option order because I don't have options. I do still have the description, but then I have something called response validation, which again, we'll get into in the next level section, okay? You also have along the bottom, the option to duplicate. So if you are really getting into some, uh, some good questioning, or if you have some options within um, a drop-down menu, that you feel like those drop down menu options or those um, multiple choice options, you want those same options again and again and again. Maybe it's a list of vocabulary words that you're using. I can duplicate that question and then just change what my 
um, actual question is, but it keeps my choices the same. Work smarter, not harder. That's like one of my favorite things ever. Of course, I have the delete button. I mess things up all the time and click delete. And then I have a required feature. So you may have noticed that in the who are you section, um, the my name is Alicia Ray, what is your name? It had a red star beside it. And that red star simply meant that it was required. You could not answer it. You could not submit the form without answering that question. Sometimes I have those turned on for students. Um, one of my favorite ways to assess learning with students is to give them 10 problems and tell them to go answer the five that they are the most comfortable with or to give them 15 problems and tell them to go answer the 10 that they are the most comfortable with. I love doing that because it gives them some choice. It, give, it helps them to feel more confident. And I feel like that's a great way to differentiate and um, to allow kids to advocate for themselves. So um, I love doing that. And so if that's, if that's the case, then I will keep this required piece turned off um, or I may tell the kids, you know, I want you to answer the first three and then you can answer any seven of the rest of them. Because the first three show me exactly what I need to see based on my objectives. But then the other seven just kind of follow up with that. OK, so what I want you to do um, for the next few minutes, I'd really love for you to go into Google Forms. Again, to do that, you go into your Google Drive. Click New Forms. And I, I'd love for you to go for just a few minutes and play around with those options. The beautiful thing is, you cannot mess up. This is just a trial, it's a test run. You cannot mess this up. It's not possible. Okay. Um, we're going to take about a seven, five to seven minute break while I dismiss these kids and make sure that they don't get in some kind of stranger car because stranger danger. Um, and then I will be right back. Um, when I come back, I will show you how to share these in real time and then we'll share them in our chat box. Okay. Are we good? Okay. All right. You do it. You do the thing. Y'all rock.
All right, friends, my five minutes might have become eight minutes, but you know, nobody got into a crazy person's car. I feel like that was a success. I know that I can lay my head down on a pillow knowing that everybody got in a car that belongs to their family. Yay! <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so, so much for, for bearing with me. I appreciate that more than you know. Um, I was stressed out about trying to do these things. Um, but then, honestly, I have to tell you, I kind of laughed because I was like, you know, these are educators. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Hannah. Like, of course, they're going to, they know how it is. If anybody in the world knows, it's not like these are business people. Like, they know how this works. Um, priority. Kid come first. Kids always come first. Okay, so I am looking at my test form now. And um, so I've got this organized. And I hope that you had time just to, I mean, you didn't have to ask about metaphysics or anything. But if, if you had the opportunity to create just a short little form that just asked a few questions and you feel comfortable and would like to share that form with others, um, you are welcome to do that. So to do that, to share it, there are a couple different ways, but I'm gonna show you the easiest way or what I have found to be the easiest way. Um, the biggest mistake that I have seen made is that folks will come up and um, right above your Google form where you're in the, this, the, the view that you're in right now is called the edit view where you're literally editing your form. This is the edit view. And so up above that, you're gonna see like that URL docs.google.com slash form slash something slash, and then there's a big old string of stuff slash edit. A lot of folks will want to just grab that and send it. Well, if you send that, you're literally sending them the ability to edit your form. That's not what you want to send, okay? So this is why in the presentation earlier, when I was kind of maybe overwhelming my friends, um, I put that eyeball in there. That's our preview eyeball, and that's what I want to use. So I'm going to click this little preview eyeball. And when I click that preview eyeball, it's going to give me a preview version of the form. And then I'm going to get a whole new URL that along the top, and I know you can't see along the top of my screen um, because it's literally just showing you my screen screen, which I have to say, I love this little update in Meet. Thank you, Google Meet, for not showing all my crazy that's happening on my screen right now. But um, along the top of my screen, and if you were following along, you now see dots.google.com slash form slash a letter letter or slash a bunch of numbers. But it, at the end, you now see view form. So if you click that big old long thing and you copy it, you can put that <clears throat> into the chat box, okay? So if you put that big old form, you don't clearly have to do mine because I mean, whatever, but that's that big old long thing. It should look like that. At the end, you should have a slash view form. There you go. Very good. Very good. Yes. So now I can click on that one. And um, when I click on that, I should be able to see the form that you have created. Now, this one does tell me that it can only be viewed by users in the owner's organization. And that might be a thing. It That is one of those things that... It, it's very likely not anything that you have done. It's very likely something that was set up by um, your district, and that's okay. I'm going to check and see if I can look in mine and um, find where mine is. We'll have to kind of go about this backwards. Give me just a second. Here we go. I accidentally shut out the screen that I was viewing, sorry. <laughs> okay. Let me go into my, I was using my personal Gmail account to make this. Um, 
but I do know that I have, like I just made this form today, so I was gonna use it to share, if it'll let me. Come on, my form, yes. I'd like for you to share this tab instead, actually. <laughs> okay, there we go, okay. Now let's see what happens. Okay, so this one is actually from my school district. Um, and so hopefully, yes. So when I go to my cog, my gear and edit view, um, it has where it says require sign in under settings, restrict to users in Surrey County Schools, which is my school district. If I uncheck that box and then I click save, it should open up to others. So if you can try that and see if that works, Miss C. Smith, and we'll see um, if that will allow us. Okay, I see making music happen. That one worked, yes. So you did a great job fixing if I don't know if you fix that one or if you picked another one but that's how you fix it um, in the future you just click that little settings gear and then uncheck that box hopefully that's going to be an option for you in your district just depends on how the Google admin set it up fantastic so I'm going to answer yours uh -huh. love it uh-huh Awesome. So making music happen, I sent, um, I responded to yours, love. Okay. We'll try to respond to yours. I love it. So if you're in the, in the group, um, if you want to go through real quick and respond to some others so that they can get some real time feedback, that would be fantastic. Just click on a couple um, and just give them something. I mean, you can make something up really. Um, you just want to put a dot in there. It's just so they can see um, what's out there. Fantastic. I loved that exit ticket. That was great stuff, Peggy. I'm going to check out Karen. Oh, I love that. Very cool. Karen, I did yours. That was fun. And Karen, I, what I loved about yours was um i love the pet integration because <laughs> we just got two kittens so i got to kind of like level my kittens for a minute um it would be cool if you change that to rather than a multiple choice that one would be a great example of a checkbox because they may have like i have kittens but somebody might have dogs and cats or fish and lizards or whatever you know um so that that's a possibility but yeah, I, oh, those were so fun. So hopefully if you are, um, if you're in there rocking those out right now, someone has uh, gone through and answered some of yours and, you know, they, they've got some stuff, got some responses in there for you. So now you should be able to go in and um, you can look at your responses. So to look at your responses, you're still in that edit view and right beside questions, you have a responses tab. And this is really where um, we were talking about in, in the presentation in the slide deck, we talked about how you can do the, um, you can do responses or you could do a slide, uh, um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, you could do a spreadsheet. And so I'm actually doing a session tomorrow at 3.30, tomorrow at 3.30, yeah, on uh, spreadsheets and why I would actually use a spreadsheet for a lot of the things I do in Google Forms. 
So when I go to responses, of course I have the responses that I have here from today, right? But then I can also make a spreadsheet. So the first time I make a spreadsheet, it's gonna ask me to create a sheet. I've already done that with this. Um, so unfortunately, like you won't be able to see the creation piece, but it's very simple. You just literally click the spreadsheet, create, and then create, that's it. So, but when I create it, it's going to pop up and it's going to show me a timestamp. So I know when my students went in and responded to my, my form of whatever kind. And then I can see my questions along the top row, responses along um, the rows that belong to each student. And it's very easily, you know, it, it's easy to read it. Very simple to read it. And then as more responses come in, they come in live. So those, somebody else comes in and they're watching it later and they're like, hey, I wanna go click on that bicycle and I wanna respond to those. Well, they can do that and it's actually gonna show up right here, even if they respond to it in two days. So that's really, really exciting. When you're finished accepting responses, um, sorry, I forgot to share that tab. I'm really struggling with trying to remember doing that. Here's my responses, sorry. <laughs> um, so again, I have my time timestamp here, names, and then within each row, I can see the responses all in one place. Um, so when I'm finished accepting responses, so, you know, I'm done. All my students have answered the questions or, you know, I teach in middle school and sometimes I just got to set a daggone deadline and I got to tell kids like by Friday, I'm not taking any more responses y'all. That's it. That's all you do it by Friday or I'm not, I'm not accepting it anymore. So, and kids need to understand deadlines because hello, we're in the real world. There's deadlines. Um, so to stop accepting responses, you just have this little button right here, accepting responses and you turn that bad boy off not accepting responses. And then you can put in here what's happening. Like this NC Bold Forms 101 is no longer accepting responses. Please check with your teacher if you have any questions. You know, you can you can customize this to be whatever it is you want it to be, okay? I'm gonna turn that back on. <laughs> so a couple of last minute things as we're um, kind of wrapping up here. It, flew through, but hopefully that is, I mean, literally you have created a form, you have, you have shared the link with learners and you have checked those responses as they've come in. And I hope that you feel comfortable to go do that on your own. Um, if you ever need me for anything, I am absolutely here for you. Again, you have my email address. You also have my Twitter and Instagram if you need me there. Um, I, I am here for you. I love Google Forms and I use them all the time. Um, here's some different information under settings. Again, you have general um, and then you have presentation information where after they finish it, you can give them a response. Um, and then you also have a quiz option. So you can make the survey or the, the form a quiz and it will auto grade for you. If you just want it to be a formative assessment and not give them a grade, then you can uncheck the point value option and they can still see if they miss the question, um, but not give them a grade for it. So it doesn't attach that, that numerical value to it that for some kids really stresses them out. But then they can see the correct answer or not see the correct answer, depending on how you feel about that. To do that, once you turn that on, um, when you go back to that edit view, you'll now see an option for an answer key. And so when you see a question like two plus three, you'll click the answer key and you'll tell it that the correct answer is five. And then you can give feedback if you choose to. Um, you don't have to give feedback. It just depends on how in depth you're going to be able to go with those students face to face. Finally, you know, I told you. I don't make it, I don't do the make it pretty thing till the contents there. To make it pretty up along the top where all those buttons were, then you have your customized theme button. To customize your theme, you just click that little uh, paint 
the the whatever that is the easel thing i honestly don't know what that thing's called it's really cool looking it's art um you click that you can click to choose an image or you can just make it a color and then if you click that plus button beside the pink you can make it any color that you want it to be um, you can even pick based on hex colors if you're familiar with those you can change the background color to be a light color or darker color and then the font style right now there's only like four options but then um, google is actually getting ready to roll out a huge forms update to where it's going to have a lot of font options for Google Forms to make them, well, prettier, which is exciting. That's all the options that I have for you for now, anyway. Um, if you're interested in more options, again, at 3.30, I am doing Google Forms Next Level. It is definitely more advanced. Um, it's gonna go very deep, very quickly. Um, but I, I do want you to know that that's coming up. If you're interested, I'll also have that again tomorrow at, um, at two o'clock, same time. Um, you can check that out on the schedule if you're interested. There's my contact information if you need me. And here is your, oops, here is your credit. If you would like to um, receive credit for joining us today, um, I'm going to slide that over to the side. So you can either get it by scanning that QR code or you can get it by going to this bit.ly and I will stick that into the chat for you. Um, and apparently it's going to require that HTTPS, which is, there you go, that's aggravating. Um, but you can click there, go find Google Forms 101 on down the list and get signed in. I'll give you just a second to scan that. And then finally, um, the NC Bold feedback. If you'll please give feedback about this session, um, it's at bit.ly slash NC Bold Feedback 21, and I'm going to put that in the chat for you. Um, if I can remember, NC Bold Feedback 21. I really hope this session was informative for you. I really appreciate, um, I appreciate you coming, and I hope that it was everything you imagined and more. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Let me know if you need anything at all at any time. I'm more than happy to help. And I hope you have a great rest of your NC Bold conference. Thanks, friends. <laughs>